exhausting. Good to be in the house of the Lord again. Share his presence is mercy. Hallelujah. I am uh, going through my notes for the lesson today. I'm probably going to wind up preaching it too, so I didn't realize I was so close to uh, the, the, the thoughts for the worship service. So, but, uh, I don't know how that works out, but it does. Praise the Lord. So God's got something in store for us today. So let's just pray together that God will open our hearts to his word today. Lord, we thank you for this morning, God, this opportunity, Lord, to hear your word, Lord, to expound upon it. I pray that you would anoint our hearts, our minds here today, that you would just establish your word in our lives, God. Lord, talk to us, speak with us, Lord, minister to us. We come to be in your presence, Lord, to hear of you. We thank you for all your great mercy and glory that you poured out upon us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, you may be seated. Today, I want to speak to you for the next few moments on enduring with faith. That sounds like a rough subject, right? Boy, he's going to get down to the nitty gritty today. And uh, as I was studying, it was, uh, it was kind of to the nitty gritty, and it's something that I needed for my spirit, so I pray that it would just minister to you. So we're going to take our reading from... Uh, the, the book of 2 Kings, chapter 4, and I'm going to start at verse 17. 2 Kings, chapter 4, verse 17. It's quite a bit of a lengthy passage that we're going to read. Very familiar story, uh, but we're just going to kind of dive in here and just, just allow the Lord to minister to us. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elisha had said unto her, according to to the time of life. And when the child was grown and fell on a day, and he went out to his father, to the reapers, and uh, he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat her uh, knees till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid on him, laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, or one of the uh, asses, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Wherefore wilt thou go to him today? Is it neither noon or Sabbath? And she said, It shall be well. Then she saddled an ass and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not thy riding for me, except I bid thee. So she went and came unto the man of God to the Mount of Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her far off, that he had said to Gazi, his servant, Behold, uh, yonder is that the Shulamite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her and say unto her, is it well with thee? Is it well with thy husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by his feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her. And the Lord hath hid it from me and hath not told me. And then she said, did I desire a son? Did I not say, do not deceive me? And then he said to Gehazi, gird up thy loins and take my staff in thy hand and go thy way. If thou meet any man, salute him not. And if, thou salute, and if any salute thee, answer him not again and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Mother of the child said, As the Lord liveth, and as thy soul liveth, I will not leave thee. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was neither voice nor hearing. Wherefore he went again to meet him, and again he, uh, him saying, The child is not awake. And when Elisha was come unto the house, behold, the child was dead. 
and lay upon his bed. And he went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And when and he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched him self upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm and he returned and walked in the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed seven times and the child opened his eyes and he called Gehazi and said call the Shulamite so he called her and when she was come in unto him he said take up thy son and she went in and fell at his feet bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Enduring faith. Sometimes the answer to your prayer has been answered and it seems like it should be going the right proper way. And for a while it seems to, to go that way and then all of a sudden things go crazy. You ever had things go crazy before in your life? There's a story of one of our uh, ministry and leadership, Brother Stan Gleason. His grandfather and uh, his grandmother had received an inheritance, and uh, they turned it down. It was quite a, uh, uh, a heavy uh, substance of money. It was going to be very wealthy because it was contingent on them moving to England, and so they prayed about it, and it was worth millions of dollars, and of course this was in the uh, Great Depression era, so that would have been uh, a need met, wouldn't it? If somebody, if you got an inheritance of millions of dollars and you was in the time of need, wouldn't you think, well, that must be God's will, right? And so they prayed and prayed, and they began to search the best they could for the truth, the ap an apostolic church that they could attend. They had many children several children, and they wanted to put God first in their lives and in their family, and they could not find a place that would preach the truth where they would have to live. And so this grandfather declined the inheritance. He said, nope, it's not worth it. I want my family to know truth. I want my family to know uh, the oneness of the Godhead. I want my family to know who Jesus really is. And so in this depressed era of life, this family chose to stay in the United States living a hard life in the depression era. By that enduring faith that they showed, we find that their family grew up not only what are they mighty, but there are many ministers that come from the Gleason family. Many in leadership, the Holy Ghost, the anointing of God's power flows through that family. Why? Because someone stood up and showed, hey, I've got a faith in my God. It doesn't matter what I'm living in. It doesn't matter my circumstances. I'm going to choose to live for him. And because of that, they're blessed. Uh, history would prove that. Many preachers, many teachers, saints of truth were raised under the leadership of the Gleason family. Hallelujah. It's, it's nice, nice to have hierarchy or patriarchs such as that, to have a great testimony to stand before the Lord. Even when it seems like that would have been the will of God to be able to supply the need, there's really a true desire and need that we all need to have down deep in our heart is before there's any money, before I obtain any wealth, before I have any type of comfort, where is the destination of my soul? Where is my thoughts on how I'm going to serve the Lord? That's my true desire. And here today, we need to make a decision. We need to have the faith to walk in times of our lives when God seems to be quiet or silent. We need to have an enduring faith. Praise the Lord. Faith is needed at all times during our walk with God. Without God, it is impossible to please Him. Praise the Lord. But to have that lasting faith is the most important 
and especially in the times of adversity. I don't know about you, but I've faced some adverse times. And it's so good to know that I can bow my knee and go to a God in prayer that hears my prayer. Will it change my circumstances at the time? No, I'll probably have to get up the next morning, go and face the consequences of a bad decision. But I know that I'm in the hands of a just and faithful God because I've chosen to have and put my faith in him. It's our anchor during the storms, during confusion, during a time of loss. It's good to know you have an anchor in Jesus when the storms are tossing to and fro. Hallelujah. If it's only operative in the good times, then our faith just becomes simply a hope. I want more than hope. Oh, yeah, if I have more than hope, then I have faith that Jesus can save me, can can give me a, a survival training camp that I can make it through the small or the lost things of my life because I desire to have and put him first. Jeremiah spoke, if you weary during the run with the footman, then how are you going to think you're going to contend with the horseman? In other words, what he was saying, if you're going to fall faint to the smallness of this life, then how do you think you're going to overcome the overwhelming obstacles that are about to come your way? You better have a hanker that holds. You better have a trust in God. You better have a faith that will endure. And I'm thankful that we can have that faith today. We can have that faith in our lives. If our faith will not last in the good times, well, then our faith is certainly going to fail us when we need it the most. I can almost assure you that if your faith is waning, then you are lacking faith. And could I remind us here today that Jesus says it's just the simple faith of the grain of the mustard seed. So you don't have to have a lot of faith. You just got to allow it to grow in your life. Faith that endures must be an intention of the one who is focused on the realm of life beyond this life. I'm looking at things far beyond this world. I'm not looking at what uh, we're facing today in today's society. No, I'm looking on to the coming of Jesus Christ. I'm looking to the coming of my Savior, my God. That's who I'm putting my trust and my faith in. It's not in the politics of this world. Could I tell you, they will fail you. They will demoralize you. They will divide you. And then they will conquer you with all the lies and deceit. Whatever side of the predicament you lie on, it doesn't matter. But I have my trust and my faith in the Lord because he's never failed me. I can, I can always, always rely, rely upon him, him. and if, if my eyes are upon him, then he will see me through. through. Praise the Lord. Solomon wrote, the swiftest man does not always win the race. Hallelujah. The strongest doesn't always triumph in battle. It's the war we're trying to win. I'm not trying to win a battle, but I want to win a war. I want to be more than a conqueror, but I want to be triumphant in all things. And through Jesus, I'm able to, to do that. Jesus explains it the best, that the key to living a victorious life is that he that endureth to the end shall be saved. Enduring faith. Our own Savior said, it's not that you finish it first, and it's not how fast you can get it. It's not how quick you can get there, but it's that you endure to the end. Because the swiftest and the fastest, they're going to pass things up. You know, when you're going through that storm of your life, you're learning to have the value of walking with Jesus. You're learning how to rely upon him. You're learning how to trust upon him. You're learning to allow your faith to grow in him, that it will endure you. Because could I tell you that a tornado will come your way, but you'll be ready when the hurricane begins to come to your life's shores because you've already trusted the tried and true and you know that your anchor holds and he'll never leave you because now you know about enduring faith. You know, in the beginning of the Shulamite woman's life, uh, of her and her husband, 
there was a deep desire to, to do something for the Lord. And so she told her husband, we're going to build a house for the man of God. He comes through here quite often and gives us the word of encouragement for the, from the Lord. And I just so desire to do something for Jehovah. I just think we need to build a place for the man of God. And so this devout couple who was genuine in their love for the Lord and living in, the, in God's economy and kingdom demonstrated their love by simply making a place for him. You know, you know, living the life for the Lord will just simply, simply demonstrate that you enjoy living for Him, that you enjoy loving Him. Him. I'm, I'm getting, getting a, a big, big echo, echo, Brother Chris. Chris. I don't know where that's coming from. Uh, and, and so, so we, we want, want our demonstration. demonstration. Sounds, Sounds kind of cool, cool, don't it? I feel, I feel like, like I'm, I'm in, in a conference. conference. Hopefully, Hopefully I can, I can get, get, get my, my line, line of thinking back, back here. here. Hopefully, Hopefully through, through our, our demonstration, God, God will look down upon us and allow us to see that enduring love that, that, that he wants to bestow upon, upon us. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Elijah, Elijah was, was always coming, coming to minister. minister. Never, Never had, had a place to go. And now, now to have a place to lay his head because this person decided that they was going to build a place for him. A simple, a simple place. place. That's, That's all, all the Lord is looking for. Is a simple, simple place that they would be able, that He would be able to reside in uh, in the life of His children. And so they made this little room and and, and this little village in the Jezreel Valley. And the man of God began to make His way there. You know, you make a place for God, He'll begin to simply show up. Elisha said, said, man, I enjoy that home, home cooking. cooking. I, I think, think I'm going, I know exactly where I can go. Could, Could I, tell I tell you the more you praise God and the things that come against you and begin to worship him, the more God's going to attend to your need because he loves the cooking that you're making to him. He loves the smelling uh, odors that you're bringing up. He loves the smelling uh, of the good sauce that you bring to him. And he, he wants, wants to, to come, come and visit you and give you that peace. He wants, he wants to, to restore, restore that joy and that love to you. And so and the so man of God began to visit this family and began to show his love upon them and began to bless them and their house began to be blessed. But this little woman had the desire of her heart. She always wanted to have children. The Bible never really goes too strong into talking about her before effects. But, but she, she couldn't, couldn't have children. She, she was barren. And, and in these times, times that, that was part, part of living life, was, was to be able to uh, uh, multiply the, the seed and be able to bear children. children. That, that was her true desire. And, and so, so not, not telling anybody, anybody she, she did the next best, best thing. God, I can't have the promise that you've given to me, but I'm still going to worship you. I'm still going to make a way for you. I'm still going to make a place in my house. And, and if you see fit, maybe you'll just bless me with a child. Uh, and so she began to offer up that praise and things. Could I tell you, you make a place for God and you begin to show him your heart. He's going to answer the need. And so Elijah came to her one day and said, what is the desire of your heart? What, what is, is it that, that you truly want? want? She, she says, says, don't play, play with me. me. Don't, don't do this, this to me. me. I, I'm not of mental state, state to handle this type of thing, old man of God. Don't, 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 don't promise me something and then not allow something to come to, back, to, 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 to pass that. I'm not going to be. I don't burden me down. Don't allow doubt to enter. I'm living in a good place right now. But if it's truly the divine move of God, then I want to have that move of God. And Elisha said, you're going to have a child by this time next year. You're going to have a little child, and you're going to be able to show your affection on that child. You're going to be able to raise that child and love that child. Don't do that to me. Lord, don't do that to me. Don't give me a promise and then allow the hardships of life to come in and take that promise away. Have you ever prayed that prayer? Maybe sometimes you're scared to even pray the prayer because you know that there are sometimes consequences to the prayer that you prayed that, that you might have to answer and you're not willing to do that. Could I tell you if you have an enduring faith and trust in the Lord that when he gives you a promise, when he gives you that desire of your heart, it doesn't matter. He's going to make a way. 
He's going to open up things because it's just another storm. It's just another trial, another test. And he's going to show you that he is a God that can be depended upon. He is a God that will be a God of love. He is a God that will answer whatever it is. Give you the need. And then we pick up where this little lady had a true need. She gave her life to taking care of the man of God. It wasn't because he was of royalty, but it was because that he was the man of God. And she wanted to do something for the Lord. And in their generosity, God wanted to present them a blessing. And so in this blessing, God begins to bestow and begins to give her offspring. Man, what faith. Man, what love. Wow, how far are we from? Up until the point that this little lady began to think everything was going to be okay. And we find that the fields were getting harvested. The farm was a plenty. She began to build houses and land. They began to have themselves a little village of their own. She had a child. She had the promise. And then one day we read it for your hearing. As that child began to get sick in his mind, his, his head began to hurt. And he was taken to his mother. And as, as she laid him down, the Bible just simply says he died. He just, he just gave, gave up, up his, his life, life right there. Right he, he, he was no was more alive. alive. He, he died. I began, I began to read, to read this and this begin, this to begin to contemplate that, 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 that this must have happened over a period of time. time. There, was there was no, no car, car that you can fly or no airplane that you can fly to the man of God. There was there was no way of getting them there in the next 24 hours. No, it was a journey. It was an endurance. It was something that she was going to have to endure and and really walk the test of time. Her child, Her child is already, is already gone. There, there was, was no, no hope. hope. And I believe in this instance that in her mind she began to allow some maybe the anger and the anguish begin to well up. And she began to say, make a way because I'm finding my way to the man of God. I told him not to do this to me and I've got to give him a piece of my Maybe sometimes I'll say something and you feel like you need to give me a piece of your mind. I pray, I pray that God and your travels, travels before, before you, you get, get to me changes, changes that. that, 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 that. Because I, I can't handle my own peace of mind. And, and on her way there, way, her journey, way, she says, husband, you're going to have to make a means of transportation. You're going to have to saddle me up with a donkey. She made her way, gave me some help, and within days she finds herself. And yonder, God gave a vision to the man of God and said, uh-oh, here she comes. There's something that's happened. And I like what Elijah said, God, you're hiding something from me. I, I believe God began to show the old man, his own the, a servant, hey, you're going to have to rely upon me. There's some things that just can't be answered uh, uh, because you just need to know. You're just going to have to put a trust in me and know that I've got everything under control. And so as she made her way uh, to where the man of God is, the servant Gehazi made, her way, uh, made his way to her and she says, oh, no, get out of my way. In fact, the Bible says, Gehazi tried to stop her, and she pushed him aside. No, you're not going to get in my way. I've got something I've got to tell. I've got something burdened upon my heart. Could I tell you, if you're going through the storm of your life, and you've got something that you want to say to the Lord, then you, you, you need to make your way to an altar and begin to pour your heart out. Because your enduring faith needs strengthening. Your enduring faith needs uplifting. Your enduring faith needs an answer to that prayer. And could I tell you here today, God has an answer to that prayer. He has not brought you to a place where he's just going to leave you, but he's brought you to a place that he's going to answer the prayer. He's going to give you the desire of your heart. The whole time that this little lady is making her way to the prophet of God, her son is dead. By all rights, there should be a funeral, and he should be in the ground by now. But something on the inside of her said, I'm not done yet. I may be angry. There is something in the Bible that says you can be angry, but don't sin. Take your name to the Lord. Take and bow your knees before the Lord and allow him to answer. That's what he wanted. 
You see, you thought everything was going good. Maybe your praise got a little lax. Maybe your worship got a little lax and you got forgot about your focus. Sometimes we get lost in not focusing upon some of the things. Things in our lives begin to come in. We get it too easy. And it's especially easy in now times, today's economy. We can get things so easy. It's, it's, it's kind of easy for us to make a way of living so that we're not hungry anymore. That, that it's easy to make a way of living that, that we can subsidize our, our plan of living upon ourselves. And we get relying upon that. Could I tell you what's going to happen when that time comes that you're going to need to put your enduring faith to, 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 to the, the test with God? And that's, and that's kind of a, kind of a message, message I believe the Lord was, was given to this, this little lady. lady. Are you Are really, really going to trust, trust me? me? You really, you really, do you really believe that I give you the desire of your heart so much that I'm going to take it away from you? From you. But something in her heart said, oh, no, I know my God better than that. I've made some room for him. I, I know I've made my calling and election sure. I know that he's going to lead me. I know he'll never leave me. And so she throws Gehazi aside and said, Begins, begins to want, to, want to, minister, to minister, and so the, the, the uh, uh, Elisha says, says, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is, it is it well with well your, husband? your husband? Is it well, well with you? With you? Is, it, is, it, is it well, well with, with your with child? child? And she says, it's, it's well. well. Oh, oh something, something must have changed. changed. Something, something when we get into the presence of God to where his word comes out, begins to minister to our pleading heart, our heart that's got anger. How many, How many times, times have you faced a trial and a test, and, and, you, and you knew, oh, God, I'm just going to leave it in your hand, hand. And, you and you felt the subtle peace that passeth that all, all understanding, understanding begin to still your mind, mind begin to, to move, move upon, upon you. you. I remember, I remember an instance as a 19-year-old kid, kid lost my father in a terrible accident, accident a, 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 and it was brutal. I, I, I couldn't even fathom thinking to, to the next day. I didn't know what else to expect, and, and, and the questions bombarded me. What are you going to do? Who are you going to rely upon? I remember going to the Lord in prayer and begin to just pour my heart out to him as a young kid and, and begin to say, God, I don't understand. Understand. I don't know why, why? But, but I pray, pray that, that you would give me a heart of forgiveness, forgiveness that, that you would open, open my mind to really, really understand, understand what you're, what you're really, really doing. doing. I, don't I don't have, have the answers, answers to all those, those questions, questions that were that on were my on mind, but this one thing I do know, know at that, that moment in time that I needed the Lord, he blessed me, he granted me with a peace that passeth all understanding, he stilled my mind. I never had the answers to those questions, but right now all I'm concerned about is one day being able to see my Jesus face to face in his glory and then be able to ask those questions. But until that day, I'm going to uh, endure, endure with my faith. faith. I'm, I'm going to endure, endure the test, the test of time. time. I'm, I'm going to endure, endure the storms. The storms. Why? Why? Because I'm, I'm in the presence, presence of God. God. And any, any time, time that, that, I that I would have a question, question upon my, my mind, mind, I would go I'd into go the house, house of the Lord. I would bow down. I believe that's where the Shulamite was. And she just simply answered, it is well. And then she was able to unarm. Well, what is what it? Is the Lord has hid it from me, dear lady. What, what, what is, is it that, that you need so much? What, 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 what is, is it that, that, that God, God has, has brought you to this point? What, what, what brings you to me? To me? I'm, so I'm so used to going to, going to you, but you, now, now you have come. come. Isn't that amazing, that amazing how God, God so, so much, much of the time comes to us, but then when that time of need comes, we go to him? The changing, changing of circumstance, the endurance, the endurance of our, of our faith, faith brings, brings us to God, God takes us to God, God drives us to God. God. I desire, I desire to be in your presence. presence. It's, no it's no longer that I'm that just I'm coming to church, God, God and bless, bless me. me. No, no, I'm, I'm going, going to the house of God because I need to be in the presence of God. I need to be touched by God. I need to be ministered to by you, Lord. And he stands there and says, well, what is it that you need? And then she begins to unload her heart. You told me. I told, I told you not, not to, to do, do something, something like, like this, this and, 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 and just, just have it ripped out of my heart. heart. You, told you told me. And then, and then everything, everything begins, begins to change. change. This, this is, is where the where endurance, endurance of the of test of time, time happens. happens. Realize, Realize her son's son still, still dead. dead. Not, 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 not in the grave, grave yet, but still dead. dead. And so Elijah says, sends his servant, take my staff, go to him. Don't, Don't stop. stop. Hurry. Hurry. Make, Make your way. way. You've got time's a-wasting. you got to get, get there. there. 
And so they're, they're, they're following, she's following Gehazi, and they're making their way back. And she's thinking, oh, this has got to be the time. This has got to be the answer to the prayer. You ever felt that way? Oh, this is the thing begin to turn around. The sun begins to shine again. Oh, this must be the answer to prayer. Oh, God, you're going to answer that prayer. And then all of a sudden, as they get into the house, he begins to lay the staff down and begins to do his prayer and begins to, to, to minister unto the dead. Nothing happens. And he stands up and begins to wonder, oh, no, what's going to happen? And there's this enduring faith of this little woman saying, oh, God, where are you at in all this? And he runs back to Elisha. And Elisha makes his way. I just wanted to see if you was going to be able to endure the test. I just wanted to see if you was able to allow your faith to grow. And, he, and the story goes that the son would walk up again and she would be able to have her son again. The promise. I believe some of you have, here today have been in the presence of a servant and you've been given and prophesied to and promised. And the sun, sun began, began to shine, shine began to wonder, wonder when's, when's the answer, answer to the prayer. prayer. Could, I Could I tell, tell you that God's, God's about to step, step on the scene and, and, minister, and minister to you in a great and, and mighty way like, like you've never had before? before. The, the things, things that you've desired, you desired, you thought, you thought was, lost was lost and couldn't, couldn't be obtained. Be obtained. Now, now God's going to answer and bring life back into us. That which you thought was dead and gone now will be alive again. Your prayers have not been a deterrent. Your prayers have not been stopped. Your prayers have not been altered, but it's taken you to the throne room of God and gotten attention of him. Oh, hallelujah. I believe God is about to move in your life. Stand with me here today. Never did touch any of my notes. But I believe that if we just allow our faith to endure, what's our faith, Brother Loma? Our faith is that belief that we have in who Jesus is. If we know who Jesus is, then we can walk in him. And if we walk in him, it just seems like some things will never be answered. And you're, you're trying, you're praying, you're crying. Could I tell you that it's an endurance? It, it, God knows exactly where you're at. He knows how to answer the prayer. You just keep praying. You just keep um, uh, making room in your life for him. Build the room. Make a way. For the word of God to live in your life. And then that, that word will come and bring life to the desire of your heart. And no longer will it just be well with you. But it will bring you to a place of total surrender and love. And an outpouring of what God wants to do in your life. Pray with me here today. Lord, I pray. Your anointing, God, would just fall fresh upon us here today. That you would touch us, Lord. That you would stir our lives, our hearts, our minds. That you would minister to us, Lord. Allow your spirit to go forth and move, Lord. We thank you for the things that you have given to us. We thank you for the anointing of your word. You know the prayers that have been prayed, God. You know the heart intent, Lord, here today. I pray that you would minister to them right now. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God, bless God bless you. Let's get ready, ready for worship, worship services in Jesus' name.